Hi, good morning to everyone. I think we can, uh, we can start the Congress. And uh, first of all, on behalf of the whole organization, so on behalf of the Clinical Engineering Division of IFMB and the Italian Clinical Engineers Association as the local organizer, it is my pleasure to welcome everybody to the third edition of the International Clinical Engineering and Health Technology Management Congress. And welcome in Rome. I would start very quickly, a very quick introduction on my side, and it's my pleasure to present a short video that we made in the previous weeks to announce the Congress and it's, uh, uh, this opportunity to start with the video. Please, if I can ask. <laughs> Clinical engineers are professionals operating complex medical systems, networks, healthcare and AI software inside medical structures. Their tasks include also management, maintenance, innovation, control, HTA, procurement and complex projects that they can carry out thanks to their experience and specific training. Over the years, clinical engineers have come across and tied relations with national and local institutions, international agencies, universities and scientific societies. For the position they hold, they continuously relate with companies and patients to guarantee the best possible healthcare system, more secure and fit to the patient's needs. clinical engineers from 50 countries from all over the world will gather in Rome for the third edition of the International Congress ICE-HTMC. The Congress will be held on the 21st and 22nd of October 2019 at Centro Congressi Europa of the Gemelli Hospital, while the social dinner will be held at the beautiful Villa Miani. Two days focused on how new technologies and innovation can serve the changing needs of the citizens. Experts will share ideas and update the community on trends, security, state of the art, and we talk about clinical engineering with a multidisciplinary approach and with regards to the healthcare expenditure. Rome 2019, you need to be here. So, it is a, a, an honor and a pleasure for Italy and Rome in particular to host this Congress, to be for a few days the center of international clinical engineering uh, community. After 2015 in Hangzhou, China, and uh, 2017 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it's now Rome hosting this, this Congress. A very big thank you to all the scientific committee. We have uh, professors and clinical engineers, uh, our senior colleagues uh, from 50 countries in the world. We have uh, around 1,000 registered participants from 60 countries. Uh, really a huge, uh, huge opportunity to connect, uh, interact, uh, and share experiences from uh, all, uh, all the continents. Uh, I will uh, now leave the stage to the chairman of the Clinical Engineering Division of IMFMB, and I invite here on the podium Mr. Tom Judd. Thank you. Distinguished guests, and please throw up my uh, pictures. Perfect. So again, welcome to Rome, the center of civilization for many. We're here to celebrate clinical engineering. Uh, that's a 50 years young profession, but our historical roots go back thousands of years. One example on the left is the uh, wooden leather prosthetic toe um, it's 3,000 years old Egyptian mummy. Um, it's believed to have come from a 50 to 60 year old lady who was suffering from diabetes. Of course, one of those chronic diseases that clinical engineers help address in the modern day around the world. 
That finding in 2007 of the prosthetic toe predated the Capuan leg, or uh, Roman Capuan leg, a bronze artifact dating from an estimated 300 BC. Sorry about that, Rome. Um, that's a joke. Uh, so my name is Tom Judd, and I have the privilege of chairing the International Federation for Medical and Biological Engineering Clinical Engineering Division. I serve in a long tradition of leadership. Uh, most recently, uh, Dr. Ernesto Yadanza, favorite son of Italy, um, Dr. Saeed Khalil from Brazil, and Dr. Yadin David from the United States. Uh, we serve in partnership with the World Health Organization uh, it's a medical device unit led by Adriana Velazquez, who's coming here in a moment, and the other uh, WHO regional uh, health technology uh, executives. So I have three quick points I want to make this morning. Um, one is, why is CED important? One is, uh, where has CED witnessed the profession going, and how can CED help our profession grow the kind of leaders that we need? So first of all, why is CED important? It's a unique organization of organizations uh, to promote and enhance clinical engineering globally. Uh, this is our third Congress, as you've already heard before, 2015 in Hangzhou, with 15 countries, 2017 in Sao Paulo with 30 countries, and there's over 60, 65 countries uh, here today. I'm very thankful for that. And we're, we're the best CE um, health technology Management practices will be shown, networking and celebrating this contribution. And this Congress, um, well, hold, fasten your seat belts for what's going to happen in the next two days. Uh, we did have our third global clinical engineering summit last night. Uh, what is that about? That's helping set priorities as we've done after the pre during the previous two Congresses, setting our priorities for the next two years. And that came from the countries. What do you want us to work on? How can we help each other? How can we work together? And the progress on these, how we've addressed these priorities, you can see on our website, ced.ifmbe.org, where we detail the 12 projects that shows our work. This is also, as been said, the fifth global CE day where we celebrate uh, clinical engineering around the world. And it's where the Olympic torch of clinical engineering is lit, first in the east, for example, China, every year and it ripples across the globe in one day, lighting fires of recognition and celebration uh, in the 150 plus countries where we serve. Last year we had 300,000 social media hits around Global CE Day. This year already, thanks to the early meeting in China, we've had over 500,000 social media hits. Okay, so where is CED, where is the profession going? I'm happy to report it's getting younger. Um, there are hundreds of students, and I know they're very much a part of the students here from Italy and others. Uh, they're very bright digital natives and will create future clinical processes that will change how care is delivered. At the Latin American um, meeting earlier this month, actually, there were over 2,000 attendees 70% of which were students. So we're getting younger. Now I want to talk about the importance of digital health, where the best of clinical engineering and health IT uh, come together, and they cannot, the importance of digital health cannot be overstated. Uh, because of our unique and, re, um, and close relationships with clinicians, clinical engineers will continue to lead and innovate in this space for years to come, in the digital health space. And what this does is makes healthcare more available to the most vulnerable in our populations, the very young, the very old, and for the mothers and fathers that ensure families that ensure their families get the best care that they need to live better lives. And yes, though, where's the profession going? And yes, historical, traditional uh, health technology management, otherwise known as life cycle asset management will still be important for years to come to guard the investment that our health systems have made to deliver the best care. And uh, someone will need to support traditional medical devices, also networks, point of care devices, and other care delivery tools. So lastly, how can CED help our profession get, build the kind of leaders like you are 
in the room, how can we help build the leaders for the future? First, we need to create and provide training and leadership and innovation so we have the capacities and skill sets required in our profession, as well as more broadly in healthcare business and interrelationships with other healthcare organizations. So we need to provide the right kind of training. Second, we need to recognize our role as leaders who serve. Think about that. We need to become fully engaged in our work such that we're creating a place uh, and a vision to help others get to where they want to go. We need to be the right kind of leaders who serve. Lastly, we need to serve with both our heads and our hearts. Uh, I get to do this in uh, some places working with mothers and babies care in Haiti, in the Balkans, and in Central Asia. What's that going to be for you? We need to discover both at work and at home, what do you see that breaks your heart? What's happening around you in the world? Find a way to match your skills and your passions to these issues and make a difference in those areas. Like Adriana has done uh, as she helped the global community address Ebola. Like Dr. Elliot Sloan will speak about uh, tomorrow morning where we need to take our technology solutions to our ministers and our ministries of health and not only show them technology solutions that, expect, that affect the clinical space, but help them implement those solutions like telehealth and like has been done in Paraguay, for example. So thank you and welcome to Rome.